All men who build their platform on women's issues are not to be trusted. Oh, this master manipulator who deletes any kind of trail of evidence behind him, which I'll explain in a minute, made a claim about a woman. She replied. Her replies kept getting reported. So I'm going to show you the reply. Yeah, he shows people exactly what they want to see, thinking he's the good guy. The ironic thing about him is that he's quite happy to make claims about other people, but if anyone questions him, bearing in mind he's a male feminist, then he loses his shit. Isn't it all men? That includes him. But I just want to show you the opener, because the opener said, I feel you've been remiss with blah, 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 blah. I am not in any way criticising him, I was saying how he had been remiss based on articles provided on how to properly gather evidence from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Hey, Brent. Hey, Miss Fanny Adams. I'm actually within the psych field myself, so I have a good grasp of the literature. And I feel you've been remiss in a few areas. So I'd literally just seen the opening statement when I had left a comment on his video saying, hey, thanks for responding, because the manner in which he responded alluded to me that we were actually going to have a discourse and I was genuinely quite excited because at this point I was a follower of his. Let's talk about brigading, the practice of organising a community to participate in a coordinated campaign of harassment on social media. Again, I'm sorry for that, but if you'd like to watch the full version, you can go and visit my YouTube channel. These videos will go up simultaneously, but unfortunately, like my main account, videos regarding him were flagged for bullying and harassment. I, I am in talks with TikTok Legal. I am in talk with um, a legal team in America based on these accusations. So um, yeah, that is why I'm putting this up on my YouTube channel too, because I will have my say. There have been numerous male feminists just like you who have been exposed for being predators on this very act. And were that concern for women genuine, you'd have nothing but support, even from me. I've said before, anyone that is distrustful or doesn't think I'm genuine, that that's a fine and logical response to the large number of men who are manipulative. Danger. So I put up an initial video response yesterday, which TikTok have currently removed, but I'm currently appealing. And every single day that he reports my videos, and I know that it's him and his little followers, because other people that speak out against Brent are also being removed as well, having their videos removed. But I will tell you now that whether it is here or whether it is on Else. But putting all that aside, what I find interesting, Brent, is that you don't talk about how you tried to find my personal information online and how you actually did find my LinkedIn online at the end of last year, beginning of this year, and you don't explain why you would do that. And after I had that notification, I locked my profile down to being completely private. Um, but obviously, I now know your personal information because it came up and flagged to me who had been looking at my information on there. Obviously, I knew that you were an engineer. Um, because you have that on your bio, but I think you were trying to look me up for some reason, which I can only assume, and I might be wrong, um, that you were maybe going to use this against me in the future, because you took issue with my refuting and rebutting what you were trying to say about statistics. And this is the type of person that you try to portray to your followers, is that you do no wrong, that you are never wrong, that statistics always tells the full story, that you can say with certainty what statistics are saying um, and they can't and that's all I've ever said to you and this started from literally an innocent video of my responding to you and then you clipping it and making me sound like a fucking moron and now I'm sorry but I don't I don't respect anything that you have to say because every I mean I don't fucking follow you anymore but Every video that I see of yours is more and more. Now, Fanny has her own equally serious accusation to make against me, that I looked at her LinkedIn profile. What, I what Fanny doesn't tell you is who gave me her personal information, which would be Fanny herself when she linked me to a YouTube video about her research on borderline personality disorder. Are you ready for me to catch you in yet another lie? Yes, I shared with you the borderline personality disorder web, uh, seminar that I put together. I don't actually remember doing that, to be fair, but whatever. But what I find baffling is that you say, oh, I then went and got, went and found her professional accreditation. When on that video itself, it quite clearly shows the institution I studied at, at the time, 
and my student number, the course number, when the thing was due and my supervisor. How stupid would I be as someone going into the health field would I be to claim that I study at a professional institution which then could be used against me in the future? There was no need to look me up on LinkedIn. No need at all because all my information for that institution was there. My personal name was there. The institution I studied at was there. In previous videos, I've actually shown where I study, but I've hidden my information, all of my information, which includes my location from those videos that I've put up. But now you have that information and you know and are associated with people. I'm not going to name names, but there are other people who have made stitches of your video of me with coloured hair who are involved with investigations for doxing people. And in fact, one of your commenters even called you on it. The commenter says here, this whole debacle makes me uncomfortable. She should have distanced herself from the cretins after that video. I don't agree with that terminology, but I did some violence not knowing I'm an IPV survivor. It's all very childish and emotional. That's a very misogynistic thing to say of a woman, isn't it? Calling a woman emotional. But you're right, not your finest hour. But on your point about being a survivor of IPV, which I am too, after 10 years at the hands of a man. You say all of this is justified because some male allies turn out to be harmful. It's just concern about manipulative men whose actions don't match their words. But that and at 9.30 this morning, I had several strikes added without notification as to what they were for. Um, I sent an email to TikTok and I discussed it with them straight away. These strikes were removed. My account is in good standing, but by four o'clock this afternoon, my account was banned. <sighs> it's now quarter to seven and my account is back. But if you follow me and you have seen my video stories a couple of days ago, you will know that on Monday last week, I went to the doctors. And obviously, having a high-risk pregnancy, I have to check in with my doctors fairly frequently. Anyway, um, on Tuesday, I was told that I could have some rather serious complications, which could, and I'm not trying to be hyperbolic when I say this, but it could be life-threatening for me and my baby. These stresses arised during the same time that a certain creator made some serious allegations against me. <clears throat> and whilst I did my best at the time to manage that stress, um, I appreciate people tagging me and talking to me about things that they've seen of me. But the reason why I don't allow tags and I don't allow stitches is to protect my mental health and my stress. I've said it before, I have quite a severe panic and anxiety disorder, which goes hand in hand with the complications that I have at the moment with my pregnancy. I also have some very personal things happening within my own family and especially my parents and their health. So I just have a lot going on that I don't need in added stress. I like to post stories of other people's content because I like to signpost you to what I found interesting or who I think you should follow. But the last couple of days have been really rough, I won't lie. And um, it's by the grace of whatever is out there that I'm still here. So I'm gonna make this an actual video just to let you know that for the time being, I can't do TikTok videos. I just can't do it. This is just not good for me. And you know, I've been humming and hollering about that decision, but I have to put me in my baby first. And this is where we're at. And I did have things in the pipeline for YouTube. I spoke to my husband about doing some videos with him, etc. And those things can stay there. I mean, I'll get to them. But again, for now, I have to concentrate on my health and my family. And frankly, staying both side. So I wanted to thank you for your love and support. Please do keep sending me messages about how you are. Please do keep sending me your stories because I promise you I read every single one. And if there was anything you want me to react to, talk, talk about, whatever it might be, just know that I see that and I appreciate that you want my opinion. But just for now, I maybe can't give it.